So if we would just like to have a moment of silence as we watch my channel die. What is up, booktube? It's Monty, and we're gonna, we're doing a haul today. Um, I filmed this intro a couple of times. I think we finally have, it's, it, I still like I'm in a fucking cave, but you can see all of my face. I don't think there's gonna be any issues like there was. Um, not that y'all care. Um, to just sort of preface this so I can feel a little bit less guilty before we get into this, um, this wasn't like one big purchase. This has been a series of small purchases over the months of September and October, which I still think is very excessive. So we're done with the book buying. Also, COVID is ramping up. I don't need to be exposing myself like that. So we can just cut out those trips to the bookstore as we will, as we will get into. I have plenty of reading material. I, I'm good. Um, so we're, book buying ban has been initiated for the remainder of the year. Um, again, series of small purchases. Most of these came from my used bookstore, I think. I think, I think. I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll get into it. Um, uh, maybe we'll do a little tally. Probably won't do the tally, but I will mention, um, there will be some kind of structure to this haul, so that was the thing that I had in mind when I set the books down around me. Um, I think that's really all the preface we need. I don't know if you really need a preface to a book haul video. Obviously, spend your money how you want to spend your money. Um, yeah, I'm not getting into a discussion about consumerism right now. To start off, I'm going to do the two books. I think there's the only two. I mean, I have a bunch of, also, just disclaimer, I'm not going to talk about the Kindle arcs that I have. Um, that would, uh, again, we're already about to talk about 40 plus books, so I'm not even going to, I'm not even thinking about the arcs <laughs> at the current, present moment, but those are lovely. Thank you to the publishers that sent them. Uh, but first up, from Sarah, she sent me these two. Uh, the only books that I have to talk about today that I didn't purchase. So the first one is Clickbait by Anne Villet. Villet. I'm sorry, Anne. I did not think about uh, how to pronounce your name. This, I believe, is like a high school um, revenge story, which I'm here for. I was very excited for at the beginning of the year. I have seen nobody talk about this, which isn't surprising because this is a, a Wattpad so it was a Wattpad sensation, though, as the cover says. Maybe you write it on Wattpad. I didn't. Um, but I'm excited. And then what I did read uh, was They Wish They Were Us by Jessica Goodman. Penguin. This is a Penguin book, right? Yeah, Razorbill. This was one I was super excited about. I talked about at the beginning of the year. And I think I'm like a, a reading sprint thing um, where it's supposed to be like a dark academia type thing. It's not dark academia. Like, there is a dead person at a school setting, but I wouldn't call it dark academia. Wouldn't even call it really a mystery thriller. I think it is more of a regular, regular contemporary. Just someone happened to be dead, and we do kind of investigate, and we do get an answer. Um, but I was very excited for this. Penguin sent me a, a digital arc. I read it way back before. Um, I think it was like end of July when I was helping a friend move right before I left, I read They Wish They Were Us. I found it compulsively readable and I have just been putting off buying myself a copy. So thankfully Sarah sent me this one. So I do recommend They Wish They Were Us. I think it's a good book. And the film rights have already been optioned. It's, a, it's gonna be a TV series. I wanna say HBO, but I'm probably wrong on that one. Um, but I do like this. So. Those are the first two books, the only two books in this haul that I did not buy for myself in some way. Now let's just, we're going to move through. I'm going to start with books that I bought that are part of a series um, because I, I bought the series essentially. So kicking things off is technically a book that I included in my birthday haul, but I wanted to hold it up now. So we're cheating. Um, but Katrina, I think it was Katrina, 
they sent me A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass again, way back in June, for my birthday. I read it recently, have a video, link up in the cards. So that meant that I had to purchase uh, A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Wings and Ruin. I did not buy A Court of Frost and Starlight, but maybe I will. I also think that these covers, I love them. I think that they're, I, when I saw them online, I thought they were better. And when I see them in person, I think that they're better. Like these are just beautiful. Like look at this. Look at these spots. Like beautiful. I do think that Accord of Mist and Fury has the ugliest spine because it's just like the spattering of the little accent color. But these are great. I love them. The hardbacks match the cup. They're beautiful. I also do think it's kind of sad that every bookstore I've seen across the country so far, I you know I help my friend move and such. Um, I only see the paperback versions of these, and I think the paperback versions of these covers are hideous. So I think that's kind of a disservice, not gonna lie, but I own the trilogy. I might be picking up A Court of Frost and Starlight. I don't know. A Court of Silver Flames. You know I stand my girl Nesta. That was pre-ordered. We're good. I'm excited for that one to come out. So way back when, I decided uh, or Monet reached out to me, somebody read. I think Monet, I'm gonna blame Monet for this purchase even though I would have bought this anyway because at the beginning of the year, I think in like January, um, after I finished uh, Queen of Air and Darkness, I thought that like maybe Sarah J, maybe it wasn't even, maybe it was March after I read House of Earth and Blood, I thought maybe I could read the Sarah J Mass canon um, that was con like that wasn't Catwoman because that doesn't count as Sarah J Mass canon. Like, that's useless to me. Um, but just like when I read the Cassandra Clare books, I didn't read that little middle grade shit she got going on with Holly Black. Like, has anyone read that? I don't think so. Um, but I bought <laughs> the Throne of Glass box set. So, uh, all of those titles. I'm not going to read them. But I have read Throne of Glass. I was supposed to buddy read the series with Monet from Life is Monet. Um, maybe that's still gonna happen. Maybe, I don't know. But I did finish my reread of Throne of Glass. I'm excited to get to Crown of Midnight and continue on at some point, hopefully in the near future, because obviously having all of the Sarah J Mass books in hardcover was very important to me. I don't know why, but it was. I think it's because my Cassandra Clare books like don't match. Like, <laughs> don't match. So I think it was very important for me to have all of the mass books and hardback. And so I appreciate that, even though I haven't read a majority of them. I do think that Throne of Glass was cute though. So based on that, I'm not mad at this purchase. So I do appreciate that at least. Moving on to the other rather large purchase that I made that was, might have been a mistake. I bought the Expanse books that I didn't already own. So that meant picking up a physical copy of Leviathan Wakes because when I, bud when I buddy read this with uh, Mina and Aaron, I read the Kindle version, so now I own the hard copy. Book two, I already owned, so that meant I picked up book three, Abaddon's Gate, book four, Chibola Burn, book five, uh, Nemesis Game, and book six, Babylon's Ashes. This isn't all of them. I think there are eight books currently out. Um, Yes, Persepolis Rising and Tiamat's Wrath are books seven and eight, and I do not own those yet. And I think book nine is supposed to come out in 2021. So there is still more to this series that I don't own, but I really liked Leviathan Wakes. I gave this four stars, I want to say. So I thought this was a really fun place to start with some space opera -y, sci fi -y goodness. And while I haven't finished book two, which is over there, Caliban's War, um, I can't, I, I, I don't imagine that I would not appreciate these. So, and they were on sale. They were on sale at 
the, these did come from the used bookstore. So these were not full price. I got all of these for like the price it would have cost me to pick out two. So I was okay with that. I picked up Magnus Chasey Gods of Asgard, The Sword of Summer, and The Hammer of Thor, which are books one and two in the Magnus Chase series. I read The Sword of Summer last year. I want to say it was around November time, and I really enjoyed this. I think Magnus Chase is probably my favorite in the little world that Rick Riordan writes in, so I wanted a physical copy, and I wanted to continue, and I wanted the hardcover. Um, for no reason other than I just wanted it. So I haven't read this one, hoping to get to this one relatively soon. Next are books that everyone said I was gonna hate, which were Crave and Crush by Tracy Wolf. My discussion video for this is not out yet because I haven't filmed it. I just finished Crave this past week, but I will be doing a, a video talking about these two books, kind of like I did for my Jade City discussion where I just talked about both of them, and I'm going to talk about both of them. I'm very much looking forward to filming this and sharing it with you, because um, we need to set the record straight. There has been, there have been lies, lies, I say, spread in the community, so we need to fix that. I, again, I was at the used bookstore, and I've been wanting to get these back in my possession, some of my original copies. I think they had like water damage. I got them at like a Goodwill and they got like water damage. I was very sad so I unhauled them. Um, and now I have them in there in hardback and so like I'm I'm living. Um, and that is the <laughs> The Century Trilogy by Ken Follett. So I have book one, Fall of Giants, and book two, Winter of the World. This is an epic contemporary essentially like it's historical fiction but it like tells the story of like five families multi-generational obviously chunky i i read part of fall of giants in 2016 loved the part that i read so i did not feel guilty at all about picking these up at the used bookstore because again they were used in their hardcover, and Ken Follett stay at the at the used bookstore, but this was the real steal. Follow Giants is never there. The other two, they're pretty, they're pretty consistently available. Like right now, even the final book, um, Edge of Eternity, I think is the final one, and it's there, but it's in paperback. So I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait, but I'm excited. Cause obviously, I got a lot of history to cover. Um, <laughs> while I wait for that third book to show up. So the last sort of section like in the series are just books that I only have one in the series. So I picked up Majesty by Catherine McGee. This is the concluding volume in the American Royals duology. Those of you who watched my 2019, I don't know why I was going to say like top 20. It was not a top 20 video my top 10 reads of 2019, American Royals snuck on the list. And I really liked this conclusion. I've seen some people, I don't wanna say names, cause I'm probably wrong, but I have seen people who liked American Royals not like this. And I'm kind of shook. I think that this really, I mean, it doesn't, like, I think it carries through storylines and wraps them up in a way that I appreciated. Not everyone's storyline. And I definitely think that there could be a third book. I think you could give me a trilogy because some of the storylines, the way that they were tied up, what? Um, but I overall really enjoyed Majesty and I'm sad that this series is over, but it's okay because The Crown on Netflix is coming back. And so I just, I will get to watch The Crown. The next book is also a book that I bought for Monet. I think only Elena read it, but that was Malice by John Gwynn. There was supposed to be a live show and it got canceled. Um, and so I own this book now. I, I paid money for it that I really only bought to read for that live show that didn't happen. So. I have no clue what this is about. 
not even like an idea. Uh, and then <laughs> this is how I this is why I knew I needed to film this video today because I bought those the, the the expanse books I bought today along with this one and I literally only bought this one to get the sale price for the the five expanse books that I wanted. Um, and that's the Eye of the World by Robert Jordan because I've heard nothing but terrible things about the way this series starts but it was the only book in the bookstore that would complete the deal for the Expanse books to be cheaper so I bought it to save money <laughs> And I don't know if I'm actually ever going to read it. I, I, there's always like that question in tag videos, like what's a book that you bought with no intention of reading? It's kind of this one. I think Aaron is doing a Wheel of Time thing. Maybe, maybe I made that entire thing up. Maybe it already happened. I don't know. But... I bought it, I own it, oh god, okay, so I guess we'll do, we'll do hardcovers next, yes, so these are just random hardcovers that aren't part of a series, essentially, I think, if I was correct, <laughs> um, and so these are just books that I bought because I wanted to buy books, essentially. Uh, so the first one I'm going to talk about is This Is My America, a novel by Kim Johnson. I've just been in love with this cover since I saw it and I wanted to own it. And now I do. The next one, I thought this was, is that the only? Okay, that's the, that's the last hardcover uh, YA that I have to talk about. The next one... <laughs> The, the next hardcover is The Girls in the Picture by Melanie Benjamin. This is set in like the early days of Hollywood and it's supposed to be about like this female friendship. And I'm kind of interested. I'm kind of intrigued. Um, I first saw it at Books a Million, but I wasn't intrigued enough to pay like full price for it. And so then it showed up at the used bookstore and I was like, that's a price. I will allow curiosity to roam. So I bought it, I picked it up, sounds like it might be something I would enjoy, hopefully I'm right. The next book is kind of exhibit A as to why I'm a fool because I've tried to read this and I had to return it to the library because I was bored and yet I bought it. I paid money at the used bookstore to own it and that is Blowout by Rachel Maddow that I did buy just because it's by Rachel Maddow. Next is a book that I bought because it has a pretty cover and uh yeah so that was words uh 50 words for rain by Aisha Lemmy. This is about uh the daughter I think it's of a uh, it's like a black I wanted, yeah, uh, a black, uh, like, soldier and an aristocratic Japanese woman, and she's raised by her grandparents in a post, I think it's a post-World War II situation, yes, in a post-World War II Japan. Um, so we've got historical fiction, the author is black, I don't know. Um, if she's also Asian, but I'm interested in it. Again, pretty cover. Good Morning America chose it for the book club. Maybe Good Morning America makes good decisions. I don't know, but I own it. I bought it. The next book is a book I've read. I read it last year. I enjoyed it. I, I did kind of shoot myself in the foot when I read all those Leanne Moriarty books because I read three of them back to back to back. And they all kind of followed a similar structure. And so they do kind of all blend together. So I'm not, I, I'm, I say that I'm not rereading this book anytime soon. But I saw Truly Madly Guilty at the used bookstore. And I saw there was a signed copy. 
and it was used so like it was eight dollars and it's signed like it's not personalized to me but it's signed so i mean i'm happy i enjoyed this one this was a good one i do recommend it um so yeah truly madly guilty by leanne moriarty don't just stop at big little lies like big little lies was a cute book but it's definitely not like the best one i personally did not like nine perfect strangers but kind of like the further i get from it the less petty i feel and i'm like you know what maybe that wasn't a one star book maybe that really did deserve rights so i think leanne is definitely more than big little lies the next two books i think look really pretty next to each other and they both are they both no but they both have like a nice soft matte finish on the dust jacket. And so the first one is Black Sun by Rebecca Rowanhorse. I don't know what it is about this cover, but I have loved this cover uh, since I saw it. And I've heard nothing but positive things. I was blessed and Saga granted my wish for it on NetGalley. Then I didn't get to it. And then Libro FM gave like one of the advanced listener copy picks was black sun so i have the audio but i did want to you know actually purchase the copy so i do own it paid full price for it at the used books well it's not that used it's like an indie um most of the books just happen to be used um but i'm excited because again i've heard nothing but positive things it's the first book in a new series by rebecca rowan horse and this has the prettiest cover. Although, what is it? Uh, Race to the Sun. That's a cute little cover. That was a that was a cover that Rick Barden presents. That was a favorite because some of those covers are hideous. But um, this is so beautiful. I'm very much looking forward to reading this and jumping on the bandwagon. November is Indigenous Heritage Month, and Rebecca Rowanhorse is an Indigenous author. This is based on like pre-Columbian America, so interesting I, I can say with 100 percent certainty i've never read a book that used that as the basis of the world building so love that then i have maybe maybe the best book of 2020 i don't know so far potentially didn't hear that for me christopher paulini's to sleep in a sea of stars look at this look at this cover fucking gorgeous sometimes I feel bad that I didn't, like, pre-order one from the store. I did listen to this. See, it says a fractal verse novel. Where's the rest of the fractal verse, sir? This book, I have a whole review. I'm going to leave it linked up in the cards because I, I love this book so much. So I definitely, definitely recommend it. We are in the home stretch. This is it. These are the last... These are the last books right here. So let's get into it. First, I have The Thorn Birds by Colleen McCullough. I believe this is like another intergenerational story and I bought it because it was $3 and the top, no, it was $2. It was $1.95 plus tax. Um, and it was in really good condition to be a dollar. So not even a broken spine on a mass produced paperback that's old as fuck. So, um, <laughs> So, again, intergenerational, I've heard things, they, I just, the title sounded familiar, so I bought it. Um, that was the thing that I bought. The next two books are by the same author, so I bought Eligible and American Wife by Curtis Sittenfeld. Uh, I literally bought these because I had just got my car. And so I drove to Barnes & Noble, which is an hour away, roughly, it's like 45 minutes. Um, and I was like, I didn't drive all the way out here and I'm not leaving empty handed. And so I did, I wasn't brave enough to try and read the Hillary Clinton fan book that Curtis Edenfeld had published recently. But American Wife is the story of, uh, she's, she's married to the president, um, but they're, they don't agree. And there's tension there and then eligible is like an updated pride and prejudice take and these sounded really interesting a lot of curtain curtis sittenfeld's books have gotten really positive reviews when i was looking at them up 
So I, I picked them up because I wasn't leaving empty handed. And I don't regret that decision so far. So hopefully when I read them, I do enjoy her work. Next is a book that I bought just because I've wanted to read this book for forever and it seemed like a good idea. So I said, why not? And that was The Godfather by Mario Puzo. Have I read this? Have I read this? Have I watched The Godfather? No, I haven't. But it seems like the kind of like messy interpersonal relationships that I want in a book. And I just read The Green Bone Saga, which is like the mafia. And this is, you know, the mafia. So why not? Like maybe, maybe this will work for me. I don't know. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Then I picked up a copy of Daisy Jones and the Six because again, it was a book that I really enjoyed last year. I felt fine purchasing it because I'd already read it. Um, I wish I'd purchased a hardcover seeing as I paid full price and it wasn't used. And then this week it popped up at the used bookstore. But you know, it is what it is. You live and you let live. I might reread this. I probably won't, but I might reread this. I am looking forward to the Amazon show, kind of, kind of, kind of. Next, I picked up these months ago. I think I bought these, yeah, like way back in October. So I picked up The Hunt for Red October by Tom Clancy because I'm still kind of convinced that I'm going to enjoy men's action adventure novels. There's no basis for this assumption of myself, but I think maybe, and this seems like a good place as any to start, so we started here. Then I picked up Frankly in Love by David Yoon because, it, look, first off, this redesigned cover is just too, it's better than the old one. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited for the super fake love song. It's coming out like in a week. Have that arc, need to read it, don't look at me. Um, but I was reading it in the store because this cover is really cute and I was like, I would love to be any of these people on the cover, like their fashion is just so beautiful. Um, and I started reading it and I was like, this writing is kind of, is kind of the moment. And again, it's like fake dating, messy interpersonal relationships. That's my bread and butter. Um, and also I'm a sucker for, again, cute, cute things. Next is The Woman in Black by Madeline St. John. I can't tell you why this book is like glued into my memory, but I feel like maybe it's been on the cover of books that I've really enjoyed. Um, references to The Women in Black, which is, I think this is just a story about some women who work at a shop in, uh, is it Melbourne? Sydney, it's right country, just completely wrong city. Um, but they, it's about these London, London? These Sydney shop women and they work and it's very short. I think this is Madeline uh, St. John's only book. I don't know, but it's in my mind and I saw it at the, at the bookstore, so I was like, let's do it. And the last book that I purchased, I have kind of like low key been on the hunt for, for a moment. And I was getting kind of bitter because this book, the covers are all hideous. Like I really hate the cover that I bought, but again, it was at the used bookstore. It was the right price. So I was like, let's do it. And all of the pretty covers are in like languages that I don't speak. So we're gonna read it in a language that I do, and then I can buy the, the, the pretty foreign edition. But I picked up Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy because I loved Anna Kay. I thought Anna Kay was God's gift to the planet uh, by Jenny Lee. And so, here we are, The Inspiration. Uh, this is uh, translated by, who is this? Richard Pivier and Larissa Vol Volonsky. Definitely butchered that one, sorry. But I am very much looking forward to this one. Again, this isn't the prettiest cover, um, but it's the one that I got. It's kind of a chunker but we're gonna we're gonna read it it's gonna happen hopefully in 2020 but 
definitely I, it's getting red so so we're gonna call this editing Monty technically it's not um <laughs> te I technically have not started splicing together any kind of footage um but it's me hello welcome back and um I forgot to, to talk about some books so <laughs> some of these I'm gonna get dragged for anyway so if we would just like to have a moment of silence as we watch my channel die but <sighs> why did I I don't know why I thought this was a good idea do I know why this is a good idea I, there's no reason we think this is a good idea but I did I did buy this so we this was a purchase that that happened it was made I own it here we are it was not, however, the only book that I forgot to talk about. I also picked up uh, Lipstick Jungle by Candice Bushnell. Um, why? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I bought one Fifth Avenue I talked about in my last haul, I think. Um, and I bought this like a couple of days later. Don't know why, but I did, I bought it. It's a thing that I own. And then the last book that I forgot to talk about the first time around uh, was Shine by Jessica Young. I'm gonna go Young, fingers crossed that was correct. Um, but this was like a K-pop story about an Asian American girl living in Korea, getting her K-pop life on. There's a romance. I thought it was very cute. I've seen some people who are like into K-pop. I think she was part of Knit Girls Generation. Yes, Girls' Generation. Um, she had a little solo career. I've seen people who are like fans of that girl group or like just fans of K-pop in general not really fuck with this one. Of the K-pop books, which I haven't read that many, I think it's literally just Shine and Somewhere Only We Know by Maureen Gu. There are the two that I've read. I like this one a little bit more. I like the romance in this one more. Maybe because it was like two famous people and that felt better to me. There also wasn't like a, a layer of deception. It was, it was just very, I can't say wholesome because there was like some, some quite like homegirl gets drugged in like chapter two. So there was some conniving shenanigans going on, but this is a good book and uh, the cover is shiny. So I appreciate it. If nothing else, I think it's at least worth a trip to your local library. But with that, I think I have actually completed the the haul. I think that's li that's everything that I've bought, purchased, was sent to me, excluding arcs again. We're not doing all that. Um, so I'm gonna go back to pass Monty. He's gonna wrap this up for us. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's everything. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. Let me know down below if you've read any of these. If you have, did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? Feel free to say what book you're most excited to see me pick up. Uh, if you made it this far into the video, you are a real one. Uh, there will be an emoji right here for you to put in the comments. Feel free, be part of the cool kid emoji club. But I'm not going to try and pick this up. I think the angle just changed because I was trying to show off the stack of bugs, but it didn't work. But, um, so I'm not going to pick them up. You saw the emoji. I'll see you guys soon in another video. But until then, and until next time.